Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Heartbeat. I'm Erica English, and I'm here in the Fishbowl Network. It is nestled inside of what used to be Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. And we want to thank you guys for letting us occupy your space tonight. Um, I am here with a very dear friend of mine and a beloved coworker. I've had the pleasure of working with her for several years, Miss Sean Ewing. She Thank is you. the mother of Carry On Franklin. Um, she and Kirk Franklin share Carry On as parents. So thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you for being here to support me. And thank you, Paul. He's engineering for us. Uh, it's just an honor and a privilege to be here, uh, even in for this moment and this occasion. But uh, God is still good, and God's going to get the glory. He will. Uh, he will. Out of all of this. Well, thank you for trusting me with this. Um, and this is, you know, we are just going to let people eavesdrop on conversations that we've had over the couple of last couple of years, um, because I know that this has uh, been a sort of a, a sensitive subject for you for some time now. So just give everybody else some background as to how we got here. How we got here. Uh, I have a son. His name is Carrion Franklin. He's my beloved. He's my only child, I love him. And we have had challenges. Of course, when you're a teenage parent, you're not perfect, but we had challenges. But over the years, Kirk and I have been, Kirk Franklin and I have been co-parents. And even though our son will be 33 in a couple of months, he's still our child. And we vowed to work together with raising him, parenting him, and even though we've had some challenges, we still remain co-parents. A lot of times people haven't heard from me. I, I haven't made a lot of noise in the news behind, you know, behind Kirk. Uh, and for what or why, you know? But we're here because some private information was leaked and Kirk kind of lost his cool. And no one, we talk about cancel culture, and I was thinking, I can't leave Kirk out here by himself on this one. So I'm really not talking to y'all, the anyone else. I'm really talking to my son. But you all will get a glimpse of this because of uh, it was made public. So that's why we're here. But um, so for the last couple of years, I know that things have been posted online. Yes. Um, from uh, by your son. So just kind of paint the picture as to, um, I guess, how things kind of climax to what, what we are dealing with today. Well, when an individual uh, child or someone is, so to speak, rebelling against their parents, and you hold them to a point of accountability, sometimes they get, you get pushback. And sometimes you get pushback because they say things are not fair, or sometimes you get pushed back because they are in a rebellious state. And in order, as you're working through that, you're trying to really find out, well, what is it? So Carry On felt at one point that his father was uh, trying to kill him. Or, and when I got wind of it and we talked about it, I said, Carry On, I don't care who it is. If anybody's trying to hurt you, then you know, we can go file a police report. We, we, will, we will deal with it. I'm not saying my son is not hurting from us being teenage parents. I'm not saying my son doesn't have a te testimony. But what I am saying is you were not abandoned. No one abdicated their responsibility towards you. You are loved. You are loved, Carry On Franklin. And I'll look in the camera and say that you are loved. We support you then, we support you now, we support you tomorrow, but there's a way to deal with it. And all we've tried to do as parents is work through the issue, get our son to a point of being a productive citizen in society as well as having a good life. So, uh, but things kind of didn't go that way. And that's okay because families go through things. But we don't get to use a part of an audio and not understand the true history of counseling, therapy, godly counsel, holding carry on 
responsible, holding Kirk responsible, holding myself responsible, because I want to deal with what my son needs to deal with. And unfortunately, we're now having to do it here. And just some background about you, because you are, you have experience in helping people who have had trauma with your work in the Women's Center. And um, you and I have just talked several times about the Me Too movement, just in our own personal conversations. Absolutely. And I know you feel passionately about um, just if you if there is an allegation or if there is something that has happened, just to go about it the right way. Right. We're not saying that a a victim, and sometimes it takes years for a victim to come forward, to be able to have the strength and the courage to tell their story. What I am saying is it's not fair to cancel somebody out before you have formally filed a complaint, made a police report, and, and given the way for investigation. We are quick, especially for black men, to cancel them out. And if this happens, to one black man, that means it could happen to my son in the future. That means it could happen to his father. That means it could happen to the next man of God, woman of God, the next parent, uh, uh, the next boy or girl. So it's a danger when we take that into consideration where someone could just come forth and say something without uh, a protocol in order to deal with it. And we have a protocol. Sometimes people do wait too late to make a report. Uh, past the statute of limitations. But we're not saying that you can't tell your testimony, but you shouldn't just run to social media first to cancel somebody out or to expose someone. And then if you are going to do that, make sure you expose yourself first. Deal with yourself first. So I have, I worked at the Women's Center in Tarrant County for uh, six years, and I worked in rape crisis and victim services, and that's when I really became educated on sexual assault, date rape, domestic violence, child sexual abuse. And then I went on and I worked for Volunteers of America. I worked at the halfway house, reentry. I worked with uh, all kinds of individuals with backgrounds, uh, all types of gang members, uh, bank robbers, arsonists, uh, you name it. I've worked in the real deal. And then working there, trying to protect my son from that environment that I work in when people become angry, dealing with your norm of teenage parenting, coming off the cuffs of being a teenage mom myself, it was a lot, you know, to deal with. But I was rooted and grounded in God. And so uh, as I've matured, I tried to work with his father uh, to continue to parent our son. And most people would say, Y'all shouldn't even be talking anymore. We talk when we need to talk about our son because that's how much we love him. Yeah, and I will say that I commend your co-parenting between the both of you. Um, it's been something that I've, you know, admired just watching how you guys have worked together on so many things. But let's talk about context because you mentioned something earlier about taking a snippet of audio and um, people, it's kind of dangerous to make assumptions when you don't know the full context or conversation. Right. And you and I were talking over dinner about Proverbs 31. And Absolutely. I want you to, to bring that up because you made an interesting point. Well, first, you know, the most important thing is my son's soul. And I've shared some, when we gave Carry On when he was 16, we gave him a rite of passage ceremony. And I shared these same sentiments with Carry On then, and I feel it befitting to always start with God's word first because my son's soul is most important to me. Have I made mistakes as a mother? Absolutely, I have. Have I kind of lost my cool before? Absolutely, I have. And I'm pretty sure if Kirk I mean, if Carry On has some audio on Kirk, he may have some audio on me. So I'm here so we can go on and flush it out. And while we're flushing it out and while we're dealing with it publicly, then maybe we can also bless some other people along the way to right. say, hey, this is how we've done it. And sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes we lose our cool. We don't condone uh, violence or threatening, but discipline is important. And sometimes when somebody say, I am going to beat you. That don't literally mean they're going to, you know, like beat them where they have bruises, cuts, broken bones, where they have a, a, a you know, uh, you know, those type of things. That, that means I'm going to discipline you because you're out of line. 
And, you know, in, in our culture, we always say it's better that I do it exactly. than have you go into the world and have a police officer do it. You know what, Erica, and thank you for saying that, because in dealing with my son, I would rather have his father talk to him, toil with him, tarry with him, and deal with him versus having some police officer who's trained, who doesn't love him, snuff him out because of his strong personality. I would rather his father deal with him. And so this is for my son. First, his father. Second, and then everybody else, last. Because at the end of the day, most of the people who will hear me speak don't care nothing about Carry On Franklin, don't care nothing about Sean Ewing, don't care nothing about Kirk Franklin and his family. But I care about Carry On Franklin, and I care about Kirk Franklin because Carry On, uh, that's his father. Right. Talk about some of the opportunities over the, or do you want to go on and share the scripture? Yes, let me, let me, uh, hold on my. Like I said, when Carry On was 16 and we had a rite, rite of passage ceremony for him, I shared these sentiments with him, and I, I feel it only befitting to do it now. I'm coming from Proverbs 31, and a lot of times women have hijacked this book, and they jump down to verse 10. They skip the first nine verses. I'm not going to go through all nine, but I'm going to read the ones that is important. It says, Proverbs 31. The words King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. This was a book of a mother talking to her son about women, ways that destroys kings, and drinking too much of a wine and a strong drink. That's what I want to deal with today. What, my son, and what son of my womb? And what son of my vows? Well, she started out talking about, what son? I'm hearing some chatter here. But most importantly, the relationship is important because you are my son. Right. Now, most scholars here, Erica, they don't really say who King Solomon was. But that's not really important. This mother who was talking to her son who was a king, had a conversation that needed to be had with her son. And she says, and what son of my vows? So let me, let me, let me stop right here because I got to. I've never been married. So a lot of people say I was, I was divorced. I can never be married. I mean, I, I, how could I be divorced we if I've never been married? Been married. Right. Kirk and I had a child out of wedlock. Okay. But here, when she says son of my vows, that can mean two things. We don't know if this woman was married, single, separated, or divorced. But what we do know is that somewhere she gave her son back to God, mm -hmm. or she had her sons within the confines of a vow in marriage. But single people, don't be discouraged because you had a child out of wedlock. He's still blessed, and he still belonged to God, whether it's a he or a she. So, uh, so... If you gave your God back, if you gave your son back to God during uh, a christening, that's okay. If you gave your son back to God through prayer, that you're going to raise him under the vow of Christianity, using a biblical stance, that's okay. But here she gets to verse three. She says, "Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways." to that which destroys kings. Hmm. I'm not really going to read verse 4 because y'all. I want y'all to go there yourselves because we've <laughs> always jumped over the first right. nine verses. Because we, we thought but it was girl She talk. goes on to talk to him about not drinking wine and not uh, drinking strong intoxicating drink because then you will forget and uh, pervert the judgment of first of all what you need to do for yourself said this to carry on when he was 16 and I'm saying this to him now this mother who was talking to her son who was a king like I said some scholars think that this is a nickname for King Solomon and we know all the women yeah. that he had in his life 
but I'm not gonna go there. I just wanna get back to, she talked about women, ways that destroy kings, and strong drink. Mm. And that's important as we begin to evaluate in order for us to say, what are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with rebellion? What are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with abuse? What are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with uh, ungodly character? Uh, but we wanna, we wanna flush all of that out. And that's what I'm hoping that will happen you know, with this interview. I want my son to get the help that he needs and become the man of God that I, or the godly man that I know he can be the talented man that I know that he is. Well, let's talk about some of the, the help because I know it's been a process. Absolutely. Talk about some of the opportunities that um, you guys have had or he's had over the years to kind of voice his grievances. Right. We have, over the years as parents, uh, we've afforded carry on every opportunity. And when parents can afford their kids the opportunity to go to a therapist, go to a counselor, whether it's a psychologist, whether it's a psychiatrist. Um, we've had godly men that we've tried to call to help us maneuver through this. And um, whatever the reason at this point, we just haven't, we've always hit that wall of not being able to work through it. And so I've even afforded carry on because sometimes people will think, oh, well, you know, my dad has this, that, or the other, and he may feel that he, he's, Kirk has some type of influence over the accountability that has to be held. I have insurance. I can, we could go to counseling off of my insurance. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, so that you, you can pick somebody that don't even know us. Just pick somebody. But, but I expect whoever comes in to hold not only Kirk accountable, me accountable as his mother, and him accountable as a son, as a child. And a lot of people say, well, carry on as a grown man. Yes, he's a grown man and he's my son that we're still working through some issues. See, he's still mine, whether he's 30, whether he's 40, whether he's 50. I'm not turning my back on him. And some men do it differently because sometimes men will just, you know, cut, you know, their kids off. Now, I have my boundaries with carry on. And each parent should have their boundary with their kids. Because if you try to continue to just give and give and give, it, 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 it sometimes can turn into, I'm going to tell you what to do. Mm. I'm going to live my life how I want to. No, when you're grown and you want to live your life how you want to, you have that option. But if you want my help, then you have to listen to some of the things that I say. And I want to listen to you. If I've hurt you, I know I've hurt Carry On. I know Kirk have probably hurt Carry On in some ways, being teenage parents, trying to maneuver through this thing called life in the role of a mother or a father. We don't deny that. But we've given you platforms to be able to do that. Do you feel like there is still a little resentment there or or any resentment at all? Resentment about, can you? About? Well, and I'm just gonna speak from my personal experience, just being um, a product of parents who are not together. Do you think there is still, and, and, and this is looking at other families and mm -hmm. seeing how you know the unit is still together and intact, right. and you kind of feel out of place sometimes. I'm speaking well, for I'm myself. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm sure that you know that's normal. We can't yeah. cure normal, we work through normal. I'm sure that Carrie and I probably have felt out of place. Um, I am sure that, you know, emotions, he has his emotions, his feelings. I'm sure he probably has not liked how his father has disciplined him. It may have been harsh at times. I'm pretty sure if Carrion have some footage again on Kirk, I'm sure he has taped me because he's told me he has taped me. But I'm saying, let's go on and put it all out on the table so that we can get past this. And I, I don't know where it's gonna go for Kirk and his family. Mm -hmm. But for me, Kirk has never given me a, a reason at this point to think that he's not raw to die to get his son back to a place of where we, of the altar of repentance 
and forgiveness. We, I mean, Carry On will be 33 years old in a couple of months. We still try to stand and work together as co-parents to try to work through this issue. We've, we've done it for years where we could have walked away. We could have said, okay, he's grown now. Because a lot of parents you know, do. They, they, they count down to you're 18 and then, um, you know, it's hands off. Absolutely. And, and, and to a certain extent, we do have to be hands off. Yeah. But does it mean that we try not to say? If, if we don't try to continue to work with our son, what is the altar for? What is repentance for? What is the unconditional love of God for? Mm -hmm. God does it. And everybody who has made a mistake since they have professed Jesus Christ as Lord, the blood that has covered them, everybody who professes that to say just to cut a child off because they grown, then don't go back to the altar asking God for forgiveness. Right. Yeah. That's so that, true. At the end of the day, I don't care what nobody else do. Sean Ewing is right or die for carry on Franklin. And I don't like people trying to come at my son from a place of uh, ill will. We have some issues that we're trying to deal with. But that does not take away the love. We Absolutely. Know that. Yeah. Not my love as a mother, it doesn't. Now, have you reached out to him or talked to him since? And him how I found out about the situation, his father called me. We, we talk. We communicate. We do what we have to do. We say what we have to say. He goes his way, and I go my way. I got a call on Saturday. I was at an event for my church. Shout out to Infinite House of Praise Ministries in <laughs> Grand Prairie, Texas, where our pastor is Dr. Roger L. Williams Sr., along with his lovely wife, Lady Andrea Lewis Williams. But anyway, I was at an event, uh, and I got a call from Kirk. And so I went to take the call because you know, most of the time, if it's, you know, he's calling me that early because he knows I'm not a morning person, I know it's something going on. Mm -hmm. So I took the call, he, and I told him, I said, hey, I'm at an event, but he gave me a little bit of, bit of the story, and I said, okay, I'll check it out as soon as I uh, leave here. And that's how I came into the knowledge of what had happened. And so at that point, did you call Carry On or I text Carry On. I text him, and I said, Basically, th that I'm not understanding why he wants to push this out into the public, but he has his reason that I don't want to take that from him. But I cannot act as if just because Kirk said a few uh, words that uh, were not appropriate, uh, but I've said some words sometimes that's not appropriate, and Carry On has said some words that have not been appropriate, but we still are trying to work through it. And I'm not going to let somebody just come in and say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to cancel this or cancel so No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. You can't take a bit of a little bit of a, a 40 second something and not understand the true history. And I'm not going to go through the, all of the history because it's nobody's business. But we have been working with our son because we love our son to try to uh, work through the issues over the years. Over the years, not just a month ago, a day ago, a week ago, over the years. Okay. Yeah. That's why context is important. So carry on. If you're listening, I want this situation to be flushed out so that we can deal with it. And if that means that you want to cut somebody off, you have that right to do that. But you don't, what you don't get the right to do is expose a little bit of something and then everybody jumps on this train and try to oh well he shouldn't have said that or he shouldn't have did this or he shouldn't have exposed that you know what I'm glad about Erica because it took me two days to get to this point to do this interview because of my love and my tears for the situation at hand with my with my son but I'm glad that God maybe this is the way God wanted it to be flushed out yeah because it's not only helping my relationship with my son and and uh, Kirk's relationship with Carry On and his family, Kirk's family, is and his siblings who are hurting. It'll help some other people along the way. Yeah, yeah. Because we all have, <laughs> anybody who has a family Absolutely. has had some type of, um, of issue. Yes. So we can only hope that this will um, hit home for some people and really resonate. And I have reason to believe that it already has. But is there anything else that you would like to say to carry on right now? 
like I said, we're parenting. Parenting is not easy. Carry on. We've made our mistakes as parents, using language that we should not use, um, flying off the handle from time to time. But at the end of the day, I want to. I want to hear. I want to really hear you out. If you haven't felt like you've been heard, I want to deal with this issue so that we could have an adult relationship, I, you know, because you do transition, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No one stays on their mother's lap forever. Carry on is on my heart forever, not my lap. So he, he has the right to go live his life, but you can't dictate what somebody's gonna do for you and with you when you make your life choices. Yeah, that's so true. So what do you wanna happen after all is said and done? After all that is said and done, I want us to, again, deal with it. Let's look at it for what it really is. Is it rebellion? Is it too harsh of parenting? Understanding the hurt from having teenage parents being um, between two homes, having other people put their two cents in that shouldn't have. Um, is it, let's deal with the disrespect. Let's deal with what, why we keep hitting this wall. Because we didn't have to be here. I, I wasn't gonna bring it out. Kirk wasn't gonna bring it out. But we're here because Carry On put a little bit of something out there. So I just wanna flush it out. Let's go on and deal with it. Let's deal with the issue at hand. Let's go and, and go to the root of it and so, so we can cancel that out. And with God's word, with God's help, with we need prayer. Carry on needs prayer. I need prayer. Kirk and his family needs prayer. And a lot of other families need prayer. We have to go to God because this, thing's get, this thing gets difficult. But I'm here. I'm ready to deal with it. Whatever tapes you got on me, let's, let's, let, go on and let, let the world hear it so I can go on and repent and, and deal with it. And I can really deal with the heart of helping my son through his pain, through his hurt, through his disrespect, through his rebellion, through if it's a little, a combination of both, carry on can only answer that. And, and at the end of the day, Erica, and, and for parents to understand, you can't keep giving to a child and giving to a child and giving to a child and giving to a child, and they keep being disrespectful, uh, uh, rebelling, and you think things gonna get better. But you can keep doing it, and if it works for your family, call us and just update us and <laughs> tell us how it could just well, help everybody else. Well, you know, we always say, well, I know my mom has always said, I don't care how old you get. That's right. You're always my child. That's right. Karen is always mine. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, he's mine. And I don't want nobody charging him up like he can't go to the altar, like he can't be forgiven by God or myself. Yeah. Because if that's the case, then we need to shut all the church doors. We need to stop all of the services that air over social media and the e-churches that have now popped up. We got to close all the doors because my son has a right to have made a mistake and pushed it out. But what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn it around for good. Well, that's an important message, too, because we talk about cancel culture. Right. And it's not just for the prominent people, Absolutely. the distinguished people. Absolutely. It's about people that have fallen by the wayside. It's about people who, Absolutely. you know, who could, who, who need love, forgiveness, redemption. So talk about that. It's not just about, let's not cancel carry on either. Absolutely. We, we're not canceling. The only person who can really counsel somebody is God. Amen. And when God closes a door, another one is going to be open. Once we get the lesson, the Bible says, and Jacob wrestled. You know, I mean, I didn't come here to preach. I, I really didn't, but anyway. Well, when it's just part of who, with the angel and he was blessed. Not, he didn't get the blessing how he thought he was going to get it, but it turned the whole situation around. Yeah. And for people to say, you know, uh, cut him off and don't speak to him again. If that's it, Kirk has never given me reason to believe that he would do something like that. Uh, we have a 32-year-old. He's 32 years old, people. And sometimes I would say he's, uh, thir Kirk will always correct. Kirk knows how old his child is, his son, his adult son. But I'm not counseling nobody. 
Because just like when I went to the altar and I say, God, and I've, I've had to go to the altar recently. I've had to say, God, you know what? This, this, I, I have been to the point where I want to say, God, I, I'm tapping out of this because it's, it's too much. I didn't want to be here to do this like this. I would have preferred that we did, did it privately. And to all of the counselors, the therapists, the men of God that are not perfect but have opened up their phone lines to us, that have opened up their homes to us, I can name names if I want to, but that's not important. Because at the end of the day, it was about how do we get back to family uh, reconciliation? How do we get back to family reunification? How do we get there? And that's where we're trying to get there. We're still trying to get there. And well, I'm not ever giving I'm not. Sean Ewing, Carrie on Franklin's mother, is never giving up on my child. Now, I may have to let him go and live his life. But I pick up his calls, and when it gets to the point to where it gets disrespectful, I know how to say, okay, well, I'm going to end it right here. Three, two, one, click. How about that I'll morning? talk to you the next time. Because there's always another day. The Bible says that his mercies are renewed daily. So nobody's counseling out my son. Right. And no one's going to, and I stand with his father because, again, I would prefer that his father discipline him than some man that don't love him. I prefer that his father discipline him who has invested time and invested his finances and invested his love than some cop on the street that don't give a damn about him. We saw George Floyd be snuffed out of here. Right. And you had people that are saying, you know, kind of, you know, ease up off of that. People were I would around. rather Kirk Franklin deal with his son than some cop that don't care about him. Right. Or some thug on the street that's gang banging. Now I've always said that. And I'm sorry, I, you know. Well, no, you're a mom. And you know, we got a lot of boys. We got a lot of black men right now killing black men. Right. Every week we're hearing about a rapper being taken out behind some foolishness, behind some gangster lifestyle. And like I used to tell them when I worked at the halfway house, I said, I'm not scared of nobody. I don't have no reason to be. I just work here. And I respected everybody, whether it was Aryan Brotherhood, whether it was Crips of Blood, whether it was whoever. Well, because we know it's a human right. Absolutely. And they get other chances, because guess right. what? If they don't get life in prison or the death penalty, we as society have to let them back in. Yeah. But somebody want to counsel somebody. Counsel yourself. But don't, if you say counsel out my son, don't you ever go back to the altar and ask God for, for nothing. Because at that point, you're a hypocrite. Well, we always say, look at you. Absolutely. Look at yourself. And, that, and that's, a, that's, that, that's the one thing that I told Carrie on when I uh, texted him on Saturday. I said, if you're going to expose anything, let's start with accountability for yourself first. Start with you. I don't mind you telling the story. I don't mind you telling about your hurts and your pain. I don't mind if you say you've been abused and maybe we didn't understand how you were trying to communicate it. But you don't get to just do it. With a with a forty second clip, just release all my tapes because I know you got some already. <laughs> just release them already, so we can go on and flush this thing out and deal with it as a family. And I will say, you've been really quiet because I don't think anybody's ever heard from you. So I know that it took a lot for you to get here. Absolutely. Um, I know it took a couple days for for it to really set in, and also not just dealing with what. The public has to say who cares about the public Absolutely. but just dealing with the hurt of being a parent this is you know somebody you brought into the world absolutely so who there is an issue i don't deny that that we have to deal with he he may have to deal with some things with his father privately he may have to deal with some things with me privately but we're here to deal with it Unfortunately, we're having to do it this way. No, you've never really heard from me. I don't think I've ever done any interview with Kirk Franklin's name in it. He was a person at one time that I cared about, and I never 
Did I have my hurts and pains as a teenage girl being foolish and unwise? Yes, I did. Did he have his hurts and pains as a teenager being foolish and unwise? Yes, he did. Does my son have his pain from being a teenager and a, 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 a unlearned, uh, not really understanding? Yes, he has. Yes, he does. We all did. But, we all, but we're still trying to strive to make it, to do better. And that's the thing with me. I'm just saying, you, but, but, but you, can't do it th you can't do it this way, though. I couldn't leave Kirk out here to act like Kirk has been an absentee father because he has not. So I felt, and I, over the years, you know, Kirk and I have talked, and I said, when I'm ready to say something, I'll speak. And it'll be on my terms. But today, and I told Kirk, I told my pastor, I didn't just come here, I talked to my beloved uncle who gives me wise counsel. I talked to him first. I told Kirk, I called you. I called people who I knew cared about me and my child first. I called my pastor first. After that, I called my pastor, I said, Hey, I, I, I want you to know that, you know, this is what's happening, and I don't feel like this time I can remain quiet. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I want us to be able to dig deep, uproot all the hurt, all the anger, and we get back to living life. I want my son to be productive. I want him to be happy. I want, I want him to be held accountable. I want him to be able to express himself. Do that. But there's a way to do it. Yeah, because I know you mentioned that before. So I wanted you to restate the why. Why now? Anything else you want to get off your chest? I want my son to know that I love him. He is loved. He, he has not been a, abandoned. And I'm hurting because he's hurting. I'm hurting because his father is hurting. I don't hate him. I hope that he will be able to dig deep where we could put everything, put everything on the table so we can deal with it so that we can move forward. I, I thought I had got my two days of tears out, but at the end of the day, Carrion is my only child. And when people are, that don't know nothing about what we've been through, the, the Terry, the toil, the love, when they don't know about all of that, to come in and try to say, well, Carrion shouldn't have done this. Maybe he shouldn't have, but he did. Kirk shouldn't have said that. Maybe he shouldn't have, but he did. But do I believe that it was out of evil intent? No, I don't. And I'm here for my son, and I still co-parent with his father for, for our 32-year-old son. Yeah, well, me and you were talking to another mom earlier, and Absolutely. I think we, we all came to the consensus that um, – from zero to 18, it's parenting. And That's what did she right. say? After 18, it's consulting. <laughs> That's right. Because they, they get to make their own choices. Yeah. But, but even when you're making your own choice, that doesn't mean that as parents that we have to be doormats. Right. That doesn't mean that we have to keep funding stuff that we don't agree with. That doesn't mean that it took me a long time, Erica, to – get myself together to clean up my credit, to, to do what I need to do. I had to do that. I had to work to do that. It took me a long time to, because I was raised by my grandmother, so I was raised like her ninth child. So I was raised as a baby in the family. And we all have our differences but I was thinking oh my god how did my grandmother do it like how did she do it with nine of us and I you know I was a little loud mouth hot-headed and let me tell you something I, I, I was cussing at an early age <laughs> because 
But I never really cursed around my grandmother. Cause, but I, well, see, I knew better. we knew better. Yeah, that's the thing. I let it slip one time. <laughs> because my uncle kept picking up the phone when I was trying <laughs> to tell my grandmother about my Christian conversion when God really saved me. And real quick after that, my uncle kept picking up the phone. I said, okay, I'm, I'm getting off the phone, hang up, because my grandmother had to work that day, so she didn't go to church that day. And I said, uh, I said, okay, I'm getting, I'm, I said, I'm talking to mama, get up, you know, hang up the phone. And he, he, he kept picking up. I said, God damn, hang the goddamn phone up. And my grandmother got mad at me. And I said, mama, he keep picking up the phone. I had just come from church. I had just had my Christian conversion. And my uncle kept picking up the phone. And I'm not going to say his name in this interview. He knows who he, he is. He knows who he is. <laughs> and he kept picking up the phone. I'm talking to your mama, my grandmother, trying to tell her about my experience. And I said, God damn, hang up the phone. <laughs> you know, I think we all have a that, that moment when you cu you're caught cussing. And my grandmother said, Woo! what? Mama. And she How dare you my fix face. your face? <laughs> You just told me you got saved. <laughs> but, but that goes to show. A lot of people think saved means perfect. Absolutely. And saved does not mean perfect. And it doesn't. So, you know, and, and one other thing that I just wanted to say, you know, you know, sometimes your child will take you there. You, know, you, you try to, you try to, <laughs> And you keep wrestling and you keep toiling. And you you having that and you sometimes know, I feel like that's all they understand. Exactly. Like, okay, well you didn't you didn't understand my college education. Cause I, right. Because for those of you who don't know, I do have a master's degree. So just don't think that I didn't do nothing with my time. Self made. Been quiet in these streets. I did go back and get an education. Self made professional. And with that, I got a, a big old student loan that I still gotta pay off too. We're gonna pay on it. <laughs> we we gonna pray for we'll pray for forgiveness of the student loan. So that's why at on this interview, I, I could have Kirk and his influence and those who he know, I, I could have had another platform. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. But I didn't. I, I paid for this. I paid this for is this on your terms. time. This is on my dollar because I told Kirk nobody's gonna tell me what I can say. Nobody's gonna tell me what I can't say. I don't need no producer talking to me about how I'm gonna talk to my son because this interview is for Carry On Rashad Franklin. The rest of y'all just get the eavesdrop <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> y'all just y'all just get in on. It. I didn't want to do this like yeah, this, and I know you didn't. But, I know you didn't. Um, uh, you know. I love my child, though. I'm here for my son first. Do you feel a little relieved now, though? Absolutely, I do. I, it took me two days, and you know we've been talking. I, yeah. I, you know, I'm like, Erica, every time I think about it, I, I just break down, and I kind of start crying because – and it wasn't about me being weak because I'm not weak. I'm a professional woman. It was about the weakness and the love I had in my heart for my son. This, this what they say, viral situation – I couldn't let Carry On stay out here by himself, and I wasn't gonna let Kirk stay out here by himself. Carry On is my son, and Kirk is my co-parent, who happens to be Carry On's father. And I work with him. I work with Kirk's wife Tammy, and I I'm concerned about Carry On's sibling, um, Carrington, Kennedy, and Kaziah. I'm concerned about everybody. I'm concerned about. My nieces, my nephews, other families who have issues, I'm concerned. So that's why I'm here today. I think I tried to touch on this earlier, but I'm just trying to make sure we cover all the bases. Absolutely. Um, talk about or do you feel like he may think, not to say it was reality, mm -hmm. but that he didn't have some of the same opportunities as the other kids? Carrie Ann was the first one to have uh, opportunity um, to go to college, to be successful. Carrie Ann has had a lot of opportunities that I didn't have, that Kirk didn't have, that Kirk really wanted to make sure that Carrie Ann had. Carrie Ann said in one of his posts, I, I kind of saw it, that he had already been around the world. That was true. He had, he had already been around the world by the time he was 18. He said that. Did he have his hurts and pains? And did stuff happen along the way? I'm sure it did. 
Uh, was Did I always keep my cool? No, I didn't. Did Kirk always keep his cool? No, he didn't. Did he keep his cool the other day? No, he didn't. But he had opportunity. And those opportunities are still available to him, just like they're available to the next uh, black boy, you know. But when you become an adult and when you – I don't expect Kirk or any other parent to keep just paying for things when it's seemingly not the time to pay for them because that person is not ready or an individual is not ready. It's okay. We all make our lives journey, our life journey. And sometimes we uh, enable kids to be brats, so to speak. I'm not saying Karen is a brat. He he's a grown man now. He can, he he can go ahead on and get ready to tell us. Well, what is it? You know, let's 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 again get to the root of it. Is it rebellion? Is it uh, the way we've talked to you over the years or handled you? Or was it your emotions? But emotions are not necessarily true and not necessarily intelligent. That's true. I mean, it may be your reality. Absolutely. But, but that's, that's why we try perception. to come to the table and we have for years tried to come to the table again. I can't thank the counselors, the therapists, the godly men that we have tried to talk to, other uh, 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 people that I trusted trying to call uh, just to say, hey, did I miss something here? You know, uh, but most of what we did for Carrie, and we, to the best of our ability, we, we did it together. And I'm sure Carrie Ann has his hurts, again, from us being um, single parents teenage parents uh, but we have to work through that it's a it's a new season it's a new day a fresh anointing that can take place Carrie Ann's not canceled Kirk is not canceled Kaziah is not canceled and he has nothing to do with this but he I'm sure that's his brother and 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 he, he you know nobody's canceled here God only God can cancel right. so but what I wanted to say to my son we're here to work through it. I'm here. I can't speak for Kirk at this point, but I'm here. And I'm sure uh, it takes time to rebuild trust and everything like that. It takes time. People are human. And they have to work through their stuff, their father and son relationship. And Carrie on and I have to work through our mother and son relationship. But at the end of the day, I know this. The Holy Ghost is present, and it, it, it has a job to do to give us those gentle nudges to push us in the right direction to handle. And I and and what better place to be to handle it so everybody else can learn and and jump on this train and learn too. Yes, we're going to hold each other accountable. We have to. I have to be held accountable. Kirk has to be held accountable, and Carry On has to be held accountable, and everyone else involved. But we don't have to cancel somebody. <coughs> And everything like that. So let's put it out. Let's put it all out there on the table. Let's do the hard work that we have to do to have the conversations, to set the boundaries, to for carry on to trust me as his mother again and his father again. And let's move forward. And let's let's do it. That's what I want to do. And carry on. This interview was for you. I don't. I don't. I, I'm. I, I'm not going to be offensive here I thank God that uh, he had Erica English my colleague who I respect your journalism experience and your um, skill that you have I thank God for our engineer Paul here I think uh, I'm thankful for Sammy having the relationship that I have with her that they were able to fit me in to do this interview on my terms not having a producer say ask this or do that because I'm like this and there, we've had a lot of black men that have went through some things, and I'm not saying they were or were not guilty, but I, but I am saying that that they were treated unfairly in how it was dealt and how you know how the issue how was, it was dealt portrayed. With. Yeah. Or we've had a lot of black men that, when an allegation comes forth, that companies, uh, groups are quick to counsel somebody. Before we could even get to a point, can we can we read what was said about us right. first? Can we can we deal with that first? Right. And it may be true, and it may take a victim years to come forth. I'm not saying don't come forward, but I am saying is if somebody if you do that to somebody and there's no protocol, 
someone could always come back and do it to you. Mm -hmm. Because I'll be the first to say, Sean Ewing has not been perfect. I've had to go to the altar for some stuff that I've done recently. But that's a whole nother conversation. But we're not here for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Sean. And um, I know, like I said, it took a lot for you to get to this Absolutely. point. Um, I do appreciate that you you trusted me to to be the one um, to disclose it to. Again, thank you, Erica. <laughs> the wonderful <laughs> Erica English. You guys, if you ever need a uh, uh, director of like marketing, communication, plan. Erica is, uh, I highly recommend her. Uh, come on out to Fishbowl if you want to do <laughs> uh, a radio show, a talk show. It's here nestled in uh, Arlington, Texas, beautiful edifice that uh, Sammy, uh, the owner, has moved Fishbowl Radio Network. And you guys, hey, uh, when Sammy first opened Fishbowl uh, Radio Network, I was one of her first ones that had a show. That's right. Here, and so... Um, so you had to come full circle. Yes, yes. And back then I was just trying to get a little experience above under my belt to say, hey, you know, I had my show. And, uh, hey, who knows, Erica, you know, we've been talking about coming back. and uh, uh, I think know, we should. We, both of us have a broadcasting background. I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but as I end this, carry on, you are loved. You are loved. You are important to me. You are important to your father, and uh, we want to just go ahead and get to the root so we can get back to having um, productive, happy lives. If we can get back there, that's where I want to go. Well, Sean, you are loved, and <laughs> Thank again, you. I appreciate you. Um, I admire so much about you, Thank you. and um, and your co-parenting uh, relationship with Kirk. It is admirable. Thank I've watched you. it uh, behind the scenes. And um, you guys are a shining example of work, what working together can look like and supporting each other. Absolutely. Right? Because it's not just one person. That's right. Um, all right. So good night. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you all. Be blessed. And I wish you guys well.